Never love you back, back, back. Hey guys, well, today I got another Bad Avenue story. Okay, I'm gonna talk about Paulie Galino's funeral. Now, when Paulie Galino was murdered, I was away in Lewisburg Penitentiary. Actually, I was in MCC when uh, they killed Paulie. I got picked up for a bank robbery. That was uh, May 10th of 93, I got picked up and they end up killing Paulie G two months later, July 25th of 1993. Now in that time frame when I got picked up, Paulie G, he was uh, passing by my house. My mother was living on Avenue at the time and uh, he was dropping money off, telling my mother, Madeline, send this to Jimmy. And he bought me a nice gold chain, okay? And uh, my mother brought it to me on the visit. And I've been wearing it throughout my whole bid. When I was doing time, I wore that gold chain. So uh, I used to call him. And he would tell me that, you know, something's going on. And my mother would tell me, Jimmy, Paulie G passed by. And he told me to say a prayer for him. So I know there was a lot of uh, things going on. And it was out of my hands. There's nothing I can do. And I know Paulie G was in trouble, okay? Uh, Joey Calco and Tommy Reynolds was definitely in Joe Benanti's pocket, okay? Joe Benanti eventually uh, didn't want Paulie G around. Paulie G was getting $10,000 a week, drug money. And we were the ones who were actually shaking down those drug dealers for Paulie G. And that's how he was uh, getting that money. And he was dispersing that money to Sparrow, Joe Benanti, and us. We would all split it up every Friday. And uh, little Joey, uh, the drug dealer, can verify that. Because there was another guy, some kid, Anthony, that was little Joey's partner. And we beeped him one time. And Paulie G gave him a fucking beating of a lifetime. Okay? And uh, I don't glorify this. This is just a story that I'm telling that is true. So one day I called the house and my mother tells me that Paulie Galino was murdered. Now, I cried because he was a brother to me. And uh, it's something that I had to go through on my own in a prison cell because I'd had no one to share my heartache and my pain with, you know, and I was looking at photos and stuff like that. But, uh, at this time, what I did was I was writing a poem to uh, send to his parents' house. And the parents uh, put the poem in front of his uh, casket and people would read it, you know. So when he was laid out, my brother John, my mother, my sister, and my family went to his wake. And a couple other kids in the neighborhood went to the wake. And at this time, Donald was alive. Donald, we call him Donald Duck. Okay, Donald was a guy from the neighbor we used to play football with. He was a really good guy. And uh, my brother noticed that none of his friends showed up at the wake. So right away, he told Donald and Frankie Boy, he said, look, he said, obviously, we know who did this. Nobody's here. At the wake, he was laid out at Miragla Funeral Home. That was on New Street Avenue and 18th Avenue. Okay, my brother was standing in front of the door. My brother was crying. Frankie Boy was outside. Duck was outside. And we know them all our lives. And we said, look, no one showed up. Calco's not here. Fabrizio's not here. Tommy Reynolds is not here. None of his friends was here. I mean, it was obvious that they were involved in killing Paulie Galino, you know. So, uh... None of his friends was at the wake, 
but a lot of his friends from Bay 23rd was there, you know, and, uh, you know, they weren't going to be told not to go, but it's told that Joe Benanti, okay, with the uh, black suit on, he told everyone not to go to Paul Igolino's wake. He was going around the neighborhood. He told Dean Benicillo. He told Fabrizio. Of course, Tommy and Joey wasn't going to go. And uh, I mean, it's a possibility they could have went, you know, and could have been Two-Face, which we know they were Two-Face because they're the ones who killed them. But looking at the photos coming up together and all of us together becoming friends, you know, uh, you know, having that friendship and then eventually, you know, becoming gangsters. But in this photo, you have Joey Calco and you have Tommy Reynolds with Paulie Galino sitting in the middle. And that's a photo that really is perturbing for the fact of those are the two guys that killed them. So this is a story I just wanted to share. And here's a photo of me and Paulie G on Bay 23rd in Bath. This is back in the days when we were selling pot for Billy Bright on the corner. That was Billy Bright's pot spot. You see Paulie G got a little shiner, a little black eye. But looking back on my friendship with Paulie G, Paulie G was a great kid. He would never kill any of his friends. And uh, I tell you these stories because they continue to bother me. They really do. You know, I know that life for me is over. And obviously it's over for Paulie G and basically everybody. But it's a story of betrayal, uh, deceit, and uh, backstabbing. You know, Paulie G... When I was growing up, he always told me, he said, Jimmy, he said, when they kill me, I want it between my eyes. And they didn't give it to him between his eyes. They gave it to him in the back of his head. They asked him for a bottle of water. And when he went to the refrigerator to give him that bottle of water, Joey Calco shot him in the back and then finished him off in the head and left him on his kitchen floor which I don't want to show for dead, for his parents to enter the kitchen and see their son dead, you know. But, uh, you know, this is a story about the mob, how the mob is just betrayal, lies, deceit. There's nothing good about it. I don't care who glorifies it, you know. Some people tell videos and they make them always look like they're the good guy in the videos, okay. These people are not good guys. There's nothing good about this life. There's nothing good about gang banging. There's nothing good about being a gangster, okay? The best thing to do is get a job, live a decent life, raise a family, and do the right thing. Because uh, never ever worrying about when the feds are going to knock on your door and take you in, you know, because murders are forever, okay? There is no uh, statue of limitations for murder limitations. So uh, this is a story I wanted to share with you. You know, like I said, when they killed Paulie G, Joe Benanti was telling a lot of his friends, don't go to the wake. And it just goes to show, you know, you're only good until that last dollar bill you brought up for the family. You know, Paulie G made Joe Benanti make a lot of money, okay? He bought him a brand new Cadillac. He put money in his pocket. Before Joe Benanti met us, Joe Benanti was a brokester, okay? That's a known fact. Paulie G put Joe Benanti in action. And in the end, Joe Benanti wanted what Paulie G had. He wanted that bank money. Every week, he wanted that money. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. It's money betrayal. So I hope you enjoyed this story. Until my next Bad Day Avenue story, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for being loyal to me, for following me. And until my next video, I'll see you guys on my next one. I love you guys. See you soon. Bye. The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed. It's a gutter.
There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. The streets will never love you back.